everybody, Syncopation Module Part 5 coming at you today. Um, this one is a little ambitious, but uh, as they say, go big or go home, so we're, we're going to go for it. Um, this one is uh, another linear phrased uh, cycling pattern that I've got going on for this, but it's kind of in the uh, gospel chop style, uh, if you will. It's a little bit more based on just concepts of basic singles, uh, full accenting in the hands while filling in the phrases with the kick um, and a lot of inverted phrases so things where we're playing the hands uh, the accented parts in the hands on the outside of the phrase so um, the first and last sixteenth or we're playing them on the inside of the phrase so middle two sixteenths um, but uh, I'll break these down as we go and uh, if you've got a copy of the PDF follow along as well as a copy of the book syncopation which usually helps for a lot of these videos so grab your copies of everything and uh, let's figure this stuff out so we'll start out with some of the basic eighth and quarter phrases first and get those out of the way and then we'll get into some of the more complex phrases after that eighth notes are going to be pretty straight ahead as they usually are for a lot of these modules this one will be accenting in either the right or left hand and i should just stress this really quickly there are no distinct stickings um, that I, I had planned for the performance version of this video. Um, it's kind of what came out, and that's one of the beauties of this as well, is that it's really based on, uh, you know, things like your orchestration or based on just the way that you might naturally play phrases. And that might even challenge you to start to think a little bit differently about some of the more common ways that you'll play phrases or some of the stickings you'll use. Um, but for this one, uh, and I'll talk more about that near the end of the video about orchestration, but for this one, it's just basically hand foot on sixteenths. So one E and a uh, basically for that. So an eighth note phrase would sound like this. One, two, three, and four, and. pattern to again show you that it's not a determinate amount of, of rights or lefts or it's not in any particular order it sort of depends on you but that's essentially how that first part's going to go the quarter note phrase is, uh, is where it gets a little more interesting so like i mentioned before we're either going to be playing in depending on where the phrase falls in the pattern or in the entire page where you're going to be playing the accented note at the either the beginning of the 4 16th note pattern so your downbeat like one two three or four and you're going to be anticipating into the next quarter value on the last 16th so the us if they fall on off beats so if you're playing uh quarter note values on the ands so syncopated quarter notes when you play that one now your downbeat is happening on the uh it's happening on the eighth value so one and so every anticipating phrase coming back into the quarter uh, is going to be on the E of the beat coming back in. Um, so I'll, I'll kind of show you that in, in a couple different ways to give you an idea what, what it's going to sound like and look like. But here's basically how the quarter note phrase will sound playing through it. I'll go uh, not too fast, not too slow, moderate tempo. One, two, three, E, and, or four, E, and up. Like I mentioned, if this was on a syncopated uh, quarter note, so everything happening on the off beats, uh, that would sound like this. So one, two, three, E, and a four, E, and a. of the entire exercise that we're doing here we're playing these phrases in a lot of different spots and again wherever we have a quarter note value whether it falls on a downbeat or on an upbeat we're always going to be playing pretty much that phrase throughout 
The other common phrases that we have in this exercise are going to be six note, eight note, and 10 note phrases. Basically what we're doing is just extending everything that we're playing from before. And because we're limiting ourselves to single stroke motions in the hands mostly, uh, when I do this, just to um, kind of differentiate between the accented patterns that are happening uh, in the written phrase versus the rests that we're filling in the gaps, I decided to play those as hi-hats. So when we have a six note phrase, the common way that I'll play it is hand, kick, kick, hand, hand on the hi-hat, followed by another kick. So just a six note phrase by itself would sound like this. a little bit more later in the video but if you had two hi-hats like an auxiliary hat on your right side you could use this as an opportunity to split that pattern up uh, on your kit so something like this it just allows you to kind of open up the sounds on your kit a lot more you could even use cymbals or splashes if you wanted so you can have fun with it at the end of it but that gives you a little bit of an idea of what we're playing for that when we do the eight note phrases uh, or eight sixteenth note phrases basically over a half note value we're going to be leading to an anticipating figure coming out so hand, kick, kick, hat, hat, kick, kick, hand, leading back into the top. So here's the eight note phrase. So again, you can have some fun with that around the kit if you want. And if you break it down into a simplest form, it's essentially just inverted uh, double stroke patterns that are happening throughout that, but we're just splitting it up in the hands. Uh, you can play that as doubles if you wanted to. Um, so you can have a little bit of fun with it that way too, but again, this is sort of based on single stroke technique. And then finally, the 10 note phrase at the very end on the last bar, Hand, kick, kick, hat, hat, kick, kick, hat, hat, kick. So we're just extending it by basically playing kick, hat, hat, uh, kick, hat, hat, kick uh, coming out of the six note pattern. So it's an extension of the six note pattern. Now let's talk about orchestration a little bit. In the performance video of this, I did all of the written phrase patterns uh, based off of just the snare. Uh, the reason for that is that for a lot of you that watch this and maybe aren't as familiar with the concept or are having a hard time kind of initially kind of getting it wrapped around your brain, um, by doing it on the snare, it makes it a little bit more two-dimensional. Uh, doing it that way is a good way to start out, just initially getting used to how those phrases are going to sound. Um, but once you get more comfortable with that, it allows you to then move around and just experiment on the kit. So if I were to take that very first section of, let's say, four bars, uh, I can have some fun with it, just figuring out some different ways that I could play it on, uh, around the, the drums and just experiment. <laughs> messing around and seeing what happens but staying true to the orchestration of the rhythm that you've got there so really getting it under your belt on just one surface first uh, obviously including the hi-hat for the filling into the phrases but then after that just having some fun going around the kit and just getting used to the way that those phrases feel and again based on the sticking that you choose that will um, that will determine you know, how you're gonna play on the kit. So if you're gonna play something like, uh, let's say quarter note phrases, right kick, kick, left. Uh, that will 
will not necessarily limit you, but that's gonna allow you to do certain things in the kit in maybe only certain descending patterns. So like the That allows you to, you know, do some sort of mirror imaging around that. And you can really come up with some cool phrases even just by doing that. So at the end of the day, it's all about experimenting. Just have fun. Once you get the concept under your belt, once you understand how to do the patterns with the kick on just one surface, like your snare drum, and then start to take it around the kit. Same with even the filling in of those phrases in between with the hi-hats, um, you know, other parts of the kit. Basically, that's all up to you. It's your canvas. It's going to be a, a clean slate, and you can do with it what you will. But at the end of the day, be creative, have fun, but get your basics down first and go from there. And finally, if for any of you playing through these different syncopation modules or looking for a lot more uh, material or different books on linear playing, I highly recommend you check out Gary Chafee's series of books. Um, all of them are great, but especially these ones, Technique Patterns and Linear Time Playing. Uh, these books are phenomenal. Uh, I'm actually going back through this one, uh, which gave me a lot of the ideas for this syncopation module. So I highly recommend that you check these out as well.